What's up guys, Michael here, and this is the iPhone 12 mini. This is the smallest, cutest, most powerful Pokemon of a phone on the planet right now. And after using it for the last two weeks, I think Apple have created something really unique, but not something that's gonna have a mass universal appeal. However, to those people out there that have been watching in horror over the last few years, as smartphones have ballooned to nearly the size of your own face, then this is what you've been waiting for. This is it, it's a green light. Go, 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 go. This is your moment, go for it. However, before you consider this, let's just talk about a few drawbacks of using this phone that I've experienced and observed over the last two weeks. We'll get to the positives also, and there are many, but here are some of the reasons the Mini might not be for you. Number one, battery. If you're a heavy user, if you leave the house in the morning and use your phone for more than just emailing and social media, if you're streaming videos, playing games, taking pictures, especially if you're on 5G, you're going to be reaching for a charger before the day is out, possibly before you get home from work, and that can sometimes be really inconvenient depending on what you're doing. Here in China, it's less of a problem because there are so many power towers in nearly every square space here in Shenzhen, but in Europe and America, I'm not sure. What's going on back there? Do you have power towers? Are you okay in general? What's going on? Let me know in the comments if you're okay and have power towers. Having said that, this thing puts up a noble fight in power consumption considering its size. The chip inside, Apple's A14 Bionic, is very efficient, but this phone is the size of a large matchbox and therefore has a tiny battery. So if you're a heavy user or a power user or something like that, then definitely something to consider. Over the last few weeks, I've been getting around five hours of screen on time on average, which for the size is pretty good, but for a lot of people, won't be enough, especially if you're outside connected to 5G. The second point, and perhaps the biggest, is that for some people, this phone will just be way too small. Now that seems like a really stupid point to make because this is the mini, but some people, because of the slightly lower price compared to the rest of the iPhone range, might be tempted to get it. And this is not really a phone for consuming vast amounts of content. I do watch YouTube on my phone as well as a little bit of Netflix, and using the mini for the last couple of weeks for that purpose has left something to be desired. I was missing a bigger screen and that feeling did not go away. It always felt unnaturally small. I really do think that if you are a person who has a lot of screen on time during the day, if you're viewing photos on Instagram, you're watching video content, you're playing games, this will just seem way too small now. Now I've heard a lot of people online saying, oh, the mini must be really hard to type on as well, especially if you have bigger hands or fingers. But actually in reality, it's even better to type on than the higher end Android phones with huge screens. I don't know why, I just think it must register accidental touches much better and sort of work out what you're trying to type and ignore any accidental key presses. And I haven't had any problem with this keyboard. I actually think it's better than a lot of Android ones, which is, I didn't think I'd be saying that. And finally, number three, and perhaps less important, the speaker is smaller and much less powerful and just sounds quieter than the entire iPhone range and pretty much every other phone out there. You are not gonna be starting any raves with this thing. And if you are the kind of person that likes to use their phone as a portable speaker to play music or to annoy people on public transport, then this is not the phone for you. Oh, and four, if I spend 700 pounds or in some cases up to 1,500 pounds for the Pro Max models, there should be a charger included in the box with your purchase. I know Apple's excuse is about the environment, but then to charge another $40 on on top for the charger if you don't have one is ridiculous. You do get some stickers though, so yay. Now, situational negatives dealt with, this is a beautifully designed, well-machined device that has a feel-good factor when you both see it and hold it because it uses the same flat square design of the iPhone 4 and 5 series. On top of the fact that it's really tiny, it does have the same feel as the older, can I say retro iPhones? But combined with the new, newish design, it's a pretty appealing package. Watch this. 
The things that we've lost in the past few years of smartphone evolution, being able to hold it with one hand, being able to reach to the top corner without having to use two hands, and as I just demonstrated, being able to put a phone in your pocket that doesn't alter the entire structure of your leg. The mini screen has a 5.4 inch Super Retina XDR OLED display. Nice marketing, Apple. It's bright, it's sharp, it goes nearly corner to corner, has one of the smallest chins on a phone and the largest monobrows, but is great overall. Only 60 hertz, but I think if Apple had put in a high refresh screen, this thing wouldn't make it to afternoon tea. However, as I used this phone more and more as the weeks went by, I did notice how smooth Apple software is when scrolling and swiping up and down in menus, because everything in the iOS ecosystem is so refined and designed for iPhone use and iPhone use only, that coming from the OnePlus 8T, which I reviewed a few weeks ago, which does have a 120Hz screen, it was less of a step down. To Tim Apple, I still want a higher refresh screen next year though. One cool addition Apple have added across the entire iPhone 12 series is the ceramic shield that Apple claims has four times better drop protection than previous iPhones, which is insane. I love that nearly every other smartphone manufacturer uses Gorilla Glass on their phones, which offers around a 30% increase in durability year on year, and Apple are just like 400% screw you. However, just because it won't smash easily doesn't mean it won't scratch. It will scratch, so get a screen protector and also the back panel of this phone it just uses the same standard glass as last year so be careful out there. So cameras and performance. The 12 mini uses the same chip as the iPhone 12 Pro Max, the A14. It's Apple Silicon, it's fast, it will crush anything you throw at it, any game no matter how graphically intensive the mini will tear through it like it's nothing. Rendering a 4K video it will beat any other Android phone. It just has that much raw power. Now, cameras on the Mini. The camera as an overall package is such a good automated system. The point and shoot capabilities of the Mini, just like the rest of the iPhone range this year, is fantastic. It can light a scene to perfection without you having to touch a single control. The colors are nice and natural. There's no overcompensating with oversaturated or over contrasty photos from this phone. And what I've learned whilst using this is that when you put these photos into an editing suite, the photos retain an incredible amount of data, allowing you to pull up shadows, gain detail, and boost certain elements of the photo without ruining it, which as someone that likes photography is really appreciated. And you can follow me on Instagram, by the way, if you wanna see more phone photography. I usually post photos that I've taken on my phones into my story, so check that out. Night mode is also vastly improved this year. This photo of a ladder was so much darker in real life. The sky was for sure deep, deep blue, almost black, and yet nighttime software has brought out so much detail. Now, I wanted to show you the before and after photo, the nighttime photo without Nightscape on and then the one with Nightscape on, but Apple does not allow you to turn on and off the Nightscape. It thinks the iPhone is smarter than you and it can just do everything for you. So that's one kind of annoying thing that I had, but it's a small thing. Last week, I was shooting a small commercial for a company and I was using the Mini to test out the kind of angles and shots that we were gonna do before we used the main camera. So I would put the phone in front of the actor and we would just pull back because there were some moving shots. And upon showing some of my friends, they asked me, was that the real camera or was that the Mini? Which I thought was quite interesting and kind of just shows you how good these phones are at lighting, stabilizing, and just bringing out the quality in general. A few little things of note with the iPhone mini, the wired charging is much faster this year. It can charge around 60% in 30 minutes, which is really impressive, especially for Apple. Of course, the charger doesn't come in the box. Wireless charging on the mini is slow, however. Compared to the rest of the iPhone range, 
This thing charges super slowly over wireless and I don't really enjoy using it, which is a shame because I have this awesome charging station from Pataka that my friend sent me. This is not sponsored by the way, I just thought it was really cool. It kind of reminds me of an aircraft carrier for charging. You can just throw on your iPad, phone, watch, wireless earbuds all at the same time. It's quite a beast to have sat next to your bed and just an alternative to Apple's failed wireless charging pads. Another thing of note is 5G. The iPhone mini has the sub six variant and the millimeter wave. So you're completely future proof with this phone. It works fine, I've had no problems. Here in Shenzhen, China, I'm looking at around 300 to 500 megabits a second. I'll take it. Now, software. I am an Android user. I think Android phones are better value in general. I think they do a lot of things better than iPhones. And this is the first time I've used an iPhone in a long time as my main phone. And I wasn't sure what to expect. I wasn't sure how I was gonna feel, but using Apple software, it's so refined and well-designed that it's kind of like walking into a hotel room for the first time, flicking the light up and thinking, nice. Nice! I could get used to this. <laughs> I can see now why people get extremely comfortable in the Apple ecosystem. I think a lot of it has to do with Apple's real attention to detail within iOS. Face ID, for example, is so well done. And there were so many other examples of refinements and convenience on iOS. AirDrop, Apple Wallet, iCloud, even Apple's own support app where you can easily chat to a member of customer service. The ecosystem is incredibly strong, convenient and well integrated. Now of course this nice hotel comes at a price and it's Apple so whatever you thought the price may be, add on another hundred dollars to the base model. The base model comes in at £699 and a hell of a lot more in other places around the world like India where it's in another universe. And to offer a phone for that price and start it at 64 gigabytes in 2020 is outrageous in my opinion. Oh, and by the way, when you do get it, you can't charge it. That's another $40. It's like Apple are behaving like a budget airline or something like, yeah, you get the main kind of thing, but if you want to like, you know, survive on the flight, then the annoying thing after all of that is that I've become quite attached to this phone. It's a beast. It's a tiny little adorable beast of a phone in a tiny little cute package. And I think because the screen is smaller, I have been using it less to consume YouTube and Netflix and social media. I think in a way that's made me happier, to be honest. But as I said at the start, it is gonna be too small for some people. Some people use this as their main device. Maybe they don't have a laptop or iPad or tablet to consume their media on. So if you are looking for a smaller phone or you think you can manage it, then sure, get it. It's a great phone. It's a beast. It's super cute. It's super fun. I've really enjoyed it over the last two weeks. However, one more thing. If you are looking for a smaller phone and maybe you don't need an entire beast mode, but you still wanna be in the Apple ecosystem, the iPhone SE was released this year and costs 300 pounds or dollars cheaper than this. I'm just saying, I'm just saying. Let me know what you think of the iPhone mini. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments section below. Tell me what you think. Could you go down to a phone this size? I think I could. So cute. God damn it. I don't want to give it back. Um, yeah, that's it. Subscribe, please. Thank you. Bye-bye.